we visited the Alvas showroom and took a look at the assembly line. But what we really wanted to see is the production line and most importantly, their quality control to give you, the viewers, a better look at what you're buying. So we reached out to Mr. Wang and Mr. Winson, who are the owners of this company, and they flew us out to Hangzhou to take a better look at their production line. So come along with us and let's see how their bikes are made. Please. All right, so this is the workshop. I'm here with Mr. Wang and Liu Shanshan. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna show us uh, the first processes of uh, how they put the template together. So the carbon sheets, how they cut up and how they layered together on the template that is needed. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so right now what's happening is that they're taking care of the layering process. They take different sheets of carbon, which are anywhere between your T700, T800, 900, all the way to T1100 carbon, depending on the spec of the bike. They layer them up for the tensile strength that they need, and then they flatten them in that machine. And after that, they cut up to the right templates that they need in that machine over there. So we're gonna take a look at all of this. Of course, the company has so many different models. You've got the aero bikes, you've got the lightweight bike, climbing bikes, the mountain bikes, the e-bikes. All of them have different templates. That means that all of the carbon layups need to be different at different tensile strengths, at different flexes. And that's why you have different carbon layups and different templates, and they're cut in different ways. Here we have a template of what the frame looks like, but I doubt you'd ever think about how many processes this has to go through. So we're gonna take a look at each individual step right now. Come and join us. Unlike big major corporations, this place is not large. There's four to six workers at any one given time doing four to six different tasks. Very, very minute tasks with a lot of detail. So Mr. Wang, who is also the owner of Alvas, was just explaining to us the process of how this uh, a rear triangle is formed and quite evidently is mind-blowing. So uh, first they begin with uh, this part and that's layered with so many sheets of carbon. And then after that, different strips of carbon are used to layer uh, upon this template around it in different, multi-different directions and eight different times. So one time this way, another time overlapping the other way. The strips are cut to the right specifications needed. Extremely time consuming. After that, it is weighed. Then this plastic sheet is inserted into it and the next process begins. These two things, as you could guess, make the little rear triangle. And that is just one process done by one person. Let's move on. Okay, so this young man is Zhang Liang, and he's one of the workers here. And right now what he's doing is he is uh, getting the right sheets and the right formations and the right layup, and then molding the frame. So as we took a look at how the uh, front fork is made and the rear, rear triangle is made, in a similar way the frame is made with the correct tensile strengths that are needed. After that, the frames and the fork and different parts are put together and baked. So. Let's move on to the next step. So 
So the next step, the frames are brought over here. Once they're completed and put together, they're put into these molds and then baked. So let's see what that looks like. So once the frame has come out of the oven, uh, the pieces are quite hard like this. And then there is a cutting and drilling process, which is taking place back there. So at the end, we have the rear triangle look something like this, which is very clean. So let's move on to the next step. So a lot of the times when people talk about making the frames, they leave out the parts of the glues and the resins that hold the frame together. So right now, this gentleman behind me has taken the finished frame and the finished rear triangle and he's gluing them together. So that's the next part. And let's just take a look at how that looks. Okay, so after the frame is put together, this gentleman puts it into this vise and holds it in place because when they're putting it into the mold, it could move a little or with the heat and the pressure, it could expand and shrink. So this makes sure to keep the frame in the position that it should be so it's baked in the correct way. So right now we have the second baking process. So the first one was the different parts being baked to get their tensile strength. And after they've been glued together, they're being baked again. So let that happen. Okay, so after one hour of being baked, the frame looks something like this. This is not that one, but it looks something like this. The frame is then uh, sanded down and checked for imperfections on the inside with an endoscope and a quality control process is done over there. So, let's see what's next. So now we come into quality control, and this has four processes. The first one is a check of its functionality. Second one is an appearance test. The third one is a check of installation and accessories like bolts and other things like that that go into the frame. And the final part is the QC. It gets a label on it to say that it's passed or hasn't passed. So let's take a look. And that's it. It's past quality control. After QC, we have sanding. So this gentleman over here is going to do it for us. Let's take a look.
So now we're in the lab, which tests the fatigue of the frames. This first one over here is a test of the five different directions in which a frame moves to make sure that it has the tensile strength and it won't crack under pressure. Okay, so the first fatigue test was, of course, the side-to-side -side movement. This one here is the second fatigue test, and it is the front-to-back movement. All of these tests are set higher than the industry standard because what they want is to make sure that their bikes are performing to the highest that they can. So let's move on to the next one. Third fatigue test is this pressure test. More and more pressure is applied to a bike to make sure that it doesn't crumble under the pressure. There's no bike here right now, but you get the idea. The next one is this drop test. Heavier and heavier weights are hit upon the seat post to make sure that the frame doesn't collapse under the pressure. The last one is for a mountain bike. There's none of those yet, but we'll try to find a video to fill that in. Let's move on. So after all of that, the frame comes out looking like this. All of us frames are hand painted, some here, some in Tianjin. If you haven't seen our Tianjin video, do check that out. We want to say thank you to Avas for flying us out here. We really enjoyed learning about their production line. We hope you did too. See you in the next video. Bye.